So we discussed about the transport system in animals that is in human beings, blood, blood vessels, heart. It's a complicated system, complex system, well developed system because the requirement of animals is uh, very different compared to plants. Animals they require very good transport system because they go in search of their food and their eating habits are different and their energy requirements are entirely different. But whereas a plant, this, its energy requirements are very less. Because plant itself has got the own energy harvesting mechanism, that is photosynthesis. Now let us see, but even then, the plants also need a kind of transport system. Let us see how they are able to transport the materials in their bodies. If you see the body design of a plant, the plant is basically having two major parts, shoot and root. The root is under the soil and uh, the shoot is above the ground where you can see it grow the various parts leaves like this so from where does this plant get the materials in plants many of the materials like either gases carbon dioxide or water they can be simply absorbed by diffusion diffusion is a mechanism by which they can simply absorb the materials but it is limited Sometimes diffusion may not be possible from this point to this point because certain trees they grow very tall, meters of height, more than 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet. So that much height. So here it may not be possible by simple methods like diffusion or osmosis, the materials cannot be transported. Actually, what are the basic materials that are transported here in plants? You see, water is the major one. Along with water, minerals. Because for the growth of plant, water is needed as well as minerals like sodium, potassium, phosphorus, along with that so many other zinc, zinc is required, magnesium is required. So in this way so many minerals are required by the plant and these minerals are absorbed along with the water and the water it needs to be transported to very long distances in the plant. Because here this is the site of photosynthesis in the leaf. Water is required there, water is available in the ground. So from here the water has to be transported there. But as I told you, the growth pattern or the energy production is less compared with the animals. Energy requirements are less in plants compared to animals. So here the process is slow, the transportation is also slow. They have some tissues to transport the water. But they don't have any pumping organs like heart in animals. Plants do not have any pumping organ and this is the one way that is water from roots to the tip of the plant to different parts of the plant in this direction transport is required and food is prepared in these parts sometimes the food has to be stored here in case of carrots or other plants food is stored in the roots sometimes the food is stored in the stem sometimes the food is stored in fruit so if the food is produced in the leaf it has to be stored in the fruit so it should be transported to this fruit so here the transport is required the prepared food materials are to be transported. So the transport of water and minerals is done by a special tissue called as xylem and transport of food other materials is done by phloem. These are the two different tissues which form the vascular tissue. We call it as a vascular tissue. The plant stem has got, stem and root, they have got a vascular bundle at the middle. The vascular bundle is comprised of the two tissues, xylem and phloem. The construction of the xylem and phloem, the various parts of the xylem and phloem are studied in your ninth class, plant and animal tissues. So in this lesson, you learnt about this xylem and phloem, what are the components and how do they work. So here, the plants, they have the transport system, that is the vascular system, which consists of xylem and phloem that help in the transportation of water and food materials. So in plants we discussed that there are some tissues called as xylem and phloem that help for the transportation. But what are the driving forces? So xylem is responsible for the transportation of water, phloem is responsible for the transportation of food. So here the transportation of water, transportation of food, what are the driving forces, what makes them flow, move? in these tissues. So here the transportation of water, the transpiration is the major process which makes the water to flow 
up in upward direction that is from the roots to the tip of the leaves so what is this transpiration the leaves of the plants or trees they have pores through which the water is evaporated continuously that is by the transpiration the plant it loses water in the form of water vapor so when this tomato are open the water vapor it goes out so the water is absorbed here the water vapor is evaporated here so as the water vapor is evaporated in the leaves the leaves will pull the water from the bottom so this transpiration it creates a suction effect suction suction effect that means a pull pull of water from the roots so by that the water is traveled in the xylem in this way so this is a kind of physical force and there are some kind of other forces also the binding force between the water molecules the cohesive forces and other forces also they drive the water to travel up but here the transport of water is only one direction unidirection so this is achieved by simple physical forces the second task is transportation of food is not achieved by the simple physical process the second part the transport of food is called as translocation the food it has to be transported from one part to another part not always in one direction sometimes to the top parts sometimes to the bottom parts when the leaves are preparing the food once the food is prepared the prepared food is sometimes it is transported in the root stored in stored in the root so the food has to be transported to the root downward downward translocation sometimes when the plant is blooming the food is required in the bud part so from the root the food it it should be transported to the bud upward direction so sometimes food is transported downward upward you call it as translocation so this cannot be done by the simple physical forces like this transport of water there the energy has to be spent for transportation the energy in the form of atp is spent for the translocation so how this atp helps so in the part of the plant where it wants to create the pressure so into that particular area sucrose is pumped into that particular area so sucrose is pumped by atp once the sucrose is injected into the particular cells then what happens it creates more pressure compared to other cells so here the energy in the form of atp is useful for the translocation let us see how so when the materials are to be transported substances like sucrose sucrose are sent into the phloem tissue that is by the energy molecules atp are utilized here and this sucrose is mobilized into that phloem tissue so this creates the pressure osmotic pressure so this osmotic pressure makes the food materials to move in the tissue so this creates so for this creation of osmotic pressure energy is spent in the form of atp so that is what observed in the transportation of food that is the translocation which is done by the energy used process so this is the process which is not as simple as this one like transportation of water it is a, involved only the physical forces but here the energy is spent in the form of atp to drive the food materials from one location to another location which we call it as a translocation in this way the food and water are transported in plants if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus